Welcome to Victory Videos. I'm Dave Dobbins and thanks for being a part of our show today. On today's program, we're going to be featuring the Christian rock group, DeGarmo and Key. This veteran music group has garnished 11 albums from 1977 to the present and has three solo efforts intact as well. The musical duo are from Memphis, Tennessee. They've toured for the past 12 years straight through and both men are married, family men with children and they're committed to continuing on with the message of Jesus Christ through music. Their missionary spirit has taken them all over the world with as many as 3,000 decisions for Jesus Christ in a single year at their concerts. Today we're going to see all, all DeGarmo and Key videos as a special musical treat for the many DNK fans out there. And through these videos, uh, and these videos will be played in chronological order in the age of sequences. We'll see uh, the way that people like so much about Eddie DeGarmo and the man who is a direct descendant of Francis Scott Key, the Star Spangled Banner author, Dana Key. Call your friends and tell them to crank up the VCRs and crank up the TV. It's going to be a great time with our DNK special today. Also on today's program, we'll have a music update and see an interview with DeGarmo and Key. And we're going to see eight, count them, that's right, eight videos from DNK today. Let's get started. At the time when their seventh album, Commander Sozo, in charge of the Light Brigade, was being released in 1985, DNK released two videos, Competition, which was the first Christian video from that album, and the controversial second one, 666. Both videos were from the, the previous 1984 album release, Communications. The 666 video was submitted to, in 1985 to MTV and was rejected on the fact that it was a little bit too violent. Well, we're going to talk more about that later on after we watch it. Here's DeGarmo and Key with Competition and 666. Two for you on Victory Videos.
And that was DeGarmo and Key, our feature group on Victory Videos, today with Competition, the first Christian video, and 666, the video that caused even MTV to reject the video. The flaming antichrist that you just saw in the video was called too violent in 1985. And in order for MTV, MTV to be willing to play the video, they had to reshoot some of the flaming antichrist part of the video that cost $3,000. Now what we're going to do now is I'm going to kind of talk you through this and we're going to play you a little bit of the segment of this video right now. What you're seeing now is a segment of the video that was shot, reshot, showing quite a different sequence. Isn't it interesting to note that the change and the addition of so much more violence in our world today, only five years later, when MTV was rejecting this? It's very interesting to see how times have changed in just a short period of time. By the way, the edited version was made and received medium to light airplay on MTV. Well, here's Destined to Win from, uh, this is my favorite song, from that same Commander Sozo album from 1985, featuring a real nice guy who I've met and interviewed a couple of years back several times. He was a guy who kind of joined up with DNK a few years back, Jesse Dixon, with DeGarmo and Key on Victory Videos.
Stay tuned for more victory videos and our special with DeGarmo and Key. Don't you touch that dial. I now have two families and I'm their child. They're not doing it to make you think they're good people. They're doing it because they are good people. I didn't expect that at all. And right away they just all started helping me. The hospitality, everyone, it's, it's, it's uh, overwhelming. Was destined to win from the Garmon Key, my personally, as I said, my favorite DK song. What what is it that makes and keeps a group of temperamental musicians together today? You know, in the case of the Garmon Key, the love of Christ is sewed as a glue for the two of the, the two of the uh, musicians from Memphis, Tennessee, who have worked together in music for the last 20 years to spread the gospel message of God. Let's meet them now. Here's Dana Key and Eddie DeGarmo in a special talk on Victory Videos. Uh, and you're, you're on the road. Um, what's the favorite part about what you do? Well, absolutely the most favorite part of what we do is being with people and seeing them respond at the end of the night to the invitation. Changing lives is really what we're all about. There's so many things that we have to do that people don't see like dumb interviews and, yeah, thank you, and, thank uh, you. and traveling a million hours in the bus and rehearsals and things like that that are, that are not very glamorous and really not very fun. But it becomes worth it all when you see uh, some kid's life change. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, you have an easy job because you only work two hours a night. No, I mean, somebody even wrote a song about that once, what about MTV and money for nothing. That, that ain't thing. working. That ain't working. But. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes, and, and when you play live, it's the only time that you can ever see everything come together. The music, the message, the audience, I mean, you can see if people are actually enjoying what you're doing, you know, and if stuff's flying at you from the stage. You know, that song. Don't do that song. That's not and happening. the truth is, you never really know if a song's going to work until you play it live. And you don't know if you're going to communicate something that you've rehearsed. and. And uh, we do, we do rehearse, and you have Most to... Most of our audience don't, they don't think we rehearse. They don't think we rehearse. <laughs> we really do. Uh, but we get to see all those things come together, and of course we get to see a lot of positive things happen to the lives of, of people in our concert, concerts, and that makes it a lot easier to continue. And uh, I don't think anybody tours because they enjoy truck stops. I mean, you know, maybe they do. <laughs> You'd have to be insane. You'd have to be insane, because you see some wild people. Look at us, we're talking about wild people <laughs> in truck stops. Speak for yourself.
This is a drug treatment center. It's where I got rid of a terrible habit. Now I work here helping other people get rid of drug habits. I want to see this town clean up. I'm a drug buster. I hire guys from the local drug treatment center. My wife says don't do it. But I say someone has to give them a break. It's my way of getting drugs out of our town. Call me a drug buster. Drug busters don't let drugs win. A public service of the National Institute on Drug Abuse. When you graduate from college, what will you be able to offer an employer? I like working with people. I really like working with people. I really like people. I'm a people person. I'm eager. I'm eager. Eager. I think I'm eager. And I was president of... Five offer an employer something meaningful, practical work experience. A nationwide college program called Co-op Education can give you that competitive edge. And I'd even relocate. Write Co-op Education. It's the experience you need for the job you want. Hi, I'm Dave Dobbins, and welcome to Victory Video's Music Update. In video news, Sparrow Records has just released a four-video package featuring four separate tapes called Front Row, featuring Margaret Becker, Charlie Peacock, Stephen Curtis Chapman, and Michael Card. And as soon as we get this video package, we will share it with you right here on Victory Videos. That's coming up very, very soon. The choir has planned a tour for early fall of 1991 with Rick Elias and The Confessions. They were opening uh, the opening act last spring for Russ Taft and did a tremendous job. In metal music and history making news, Frontline Intense Records sponsored a major news release party in Chicago who featured Sacred, Warrior, Sacred Warrior's new album called The Wicked Generation. This is a new back to basic concept album about the focus is on some of the weakness, weakness in our generation, such as child abuse and incest. These controversial topics are being tackled by more and more musical bands to show the power of God's love as He shines through the whole situation. You know, the Newsboys have released their second album on Star Song Records. The Aussies from Down Under have gone on to an alternative pop direction with this album featuring good hook hits like Stand Up For Jesus, Get Up For Love, and Victory. Hey, I like that song title. And the album is called Hell Is For Wimps. After you hear it, you'll know it's true. And that's it for Music Update. I'm Dave Dobbins reporting for Victory Videos Music Update. Yo, my name is Michael Peace, and you're watching Victory Videos, and I'm going to tell you something. There is victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody out there that's not living for the Lord, you need to make the right move for real. Don't even bother to change the dial. Stay where you are. I promise you, you'll never be the same again. And that might be a good thing, too. Later.
DeGarmo and Key with Hand in Hand. For you trivia experts, if you haven't been keeping track, DeGarmo and Key were featured on the cover of CCM Magazine in October of 1990. And before that, they were featured on the front cover of CCM Magazine, Contemporary Christian Music Magazine, September of 1985. I thought you might like to know that. Well, let's look in again on an interview on a special talk with DeGarmo and Key again. Victory Videos. You've been together as DeGarmo and Key since 1978, I think it is, isn't it? Uh, and lately you've expanded your range of activities with Dana, you writing a book, and Eddie doing a, a solo album. Does this mean the end of DeGarmo and Key at some time in the future? I don't think so, John. I'm really, Eddie and I just found time this last year to uh, to do some other things that express some of the other abilities that God has given us that we're not able to express through DeGarmo and Key. But a book. I mean, I guess uh, I'm a little surprised that you wrote a book. You're a musician. I'm more surprised than you, really. <laughs> and I really, I wouldn't have written the book, but I just felt compelled three years ago because all of the criticism that we heard in 1978 we assumed that eventually when uh, people saw the wonderful track record that was being developed by contemporary Christian musicians and their ministries, that the criticism would somehow subside eventually. But three years ago, it just kind of reached a, uh, a peak, and uh, I really felt like that it was time that the people that were sitting on the fence about the issue heard from someone who actually performs contemporary Christian music on a daily basis, someone who has, has felt that calling of God themselves and has a biblical foundation for a ministry. But as such, you're not really an objective observer. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I think I am a, an objective observer now. I perhaps wasn't 10 years ago because I was so offended by the criticism and so upset and, and, and really just I didn't understand why. But I think, John, now that, that I've had uh, years to really think about the critics and the criticism, I've begun to understand that most of the criticism comes from a lack of knowledge. What we found is that if a person comes to a DeGarmo and Key concert, sits through the whole concert, or if they sit down and read the book, Don't Stop the Music, then they understand what we're all about and they become an ally rather than an enemy. What should you tell someone who is a, a critic of, of Christian music? I mean, what kind of things can be said to validate it? Well, for one thing, I would tell them in this short interview, I obviously couldn't cover all the bases that I cover in the book, but I tell them this, if you were going to uh, reach Farmers for Christ, you'd probably get yourself some overalls, maybe a ball cap and chew on a straw, and maybe read a little bit of Farmer's Almanac so you could really kind of fit into the culture, right? Well, if you're going to minister to a guy like Donald Trump, you'd probably want to go out and get yourself a three-piece suit and right. dress kind of like him. Well, if you're going to minister to the rock and roll culture, you uh, also need to develop the vocabulary, the lifestyle, and the dress so you can go right where they are and reach them like they are. And really, when you think about it, isn't that what Jesus did with us? I think so. So you're an author, and, uh, and with the acceptance of uh, the video, it feels good to be forgiven, and country music television, of all things, you're, you're becoming a country star. Uh, yeah, they haven't figured out what country it's <laughs> from yet, but... Uh, <laughs> Oh, doing the solo record was a, it was a lot of fun for me. And, uh, you know, we, Dan and I have made 12 records together. And it's, it's always a compromise. You know, we, we write together and we get together. And, and we, great things come out of compromise. But hey, let's face it, sometimes you want to do something that you can do on your own and you're either going to yeah. destroy it or reduce, you know, right. make it great on your own. And I had some things that, that I wanted to say. And, uh, Anyone that's ever heard the record obviously knows it's very different than, than what Dan and I do together. Uh, it's soul music, you know. I come Memphis from, soul, no Memphis less. soul, yes. I come from Memphis. It's no secret. And I love the sound of that stuff. It has a very jubilant feel to, to it. Uh, the record talks about... Uh, talks. I, I guess the general theme of the record would be that, the, that this life is just not one big joy ride. And so hopefully it's for everybody talks about hard times and, and how we can get out of those times. You mentioned the video, being a country star. Hmm. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's, I'm actually very grateful. But country music television has picked this video up and, and have shown it a lot, a whole lot. I've had people from all walks of life tell me. In fact, in our bus driver's hometown, 
I'm right up there with with the Beatles. Oh, we can't. <laughs> you know, we, we, it's, it's we can't no go kidding. into a truck stop anymore with Eddie. I'm That's right. Such a big star with the truckers. Uh, I, I think it's the, the the theme of the song as much as anything. Feels good to be forgiven. Who can argue with that? No matter what background you're from, no matter if you're like Dana said, Donald Trump, or if you're a rock and roller, it feels good to be forgiven. And that's that's what we all that's what we all want to feel when we give our lives to Christ. This is Dave Dobbins. Coming up, more to Garmo and Key on Victory Videos. Stay tuned. we got more coming your way on b &K.
gosh, Darlene, it sure is amazing how much we have in common. I know, Larry. We both love three-car pileups. We both were built in Buffalo. And we both know wearing safety belts help save thousands of lives. Yeah, this is fascinating. Don't mind Vince. He's getting over a bad breakup. I know. Janet's picking up the pieces, too. They're in here. I wish they understood it's all worth it to get people to buckle up. Hey, lacerated lovebirds, I sense a major crush. <laughs> could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Talk about head over heels. That was Eddie DeGarmo, and it feels good to be forgiven. Well, I tell you what, those guys are having a good time in that song, aren't they? That song was nominated for a Grammy Award and was Eddie's first solo effort back in 1977. The album received a, a whole lot of letters from fans who related to the feelings behind the songs. Eddie said it was written at a time when he lost his father to a fatal car wreck and rode from a point of view of that God was restoring his life and restoring the suffering in his life. And, you know, people related to that. Also, this video made people feel so good that it received airplay on country music television, the Nashville Network, Video Country, and Black Entertainment Network, Video Gospel. <laughs> well, congrats to Eddie for being faithful to your God. Let's look in again on DeGarmon Key on Victory Videos. The title song from your album, The Pledge, has the line, He died for me, I'll live for him. Now, a cynic might think of that as just a real good marketing slogan, but I'm sure that it's a lot more than that to you. Oh, it's a tremendous amount more to us than just a marketing slogan or a cliché. About a year and a half ago, Eddie and I began to pray prayerfully consider changing the direction of our ministry on the upcoming album. And I tell you, that's a big decision for us. Yeah. Because after 10 years of being primarily known as an evangelism group, then to change your ministry to the Lordship of Christ is a tremendous leap of faith. And we had to be absolutely sure that this was something that we really felt God wanted us to do. Uh, but I, I think that the way that the Pledge album is being received and the way that it seems to be changing lives is an indication that it really is God's will for us to change our ministry focus this year. Why did you do that? Well, we're, really what we wanted to do is, is we wanted to write uh, the kind of lyrics on the album that would challenge the casual Christian to become a committed Christian. So many youth pastors around the country, John, have reflected to us, yeah, I've got a big youth group, but so many of them are not serious about their faith. Mm -hmm. And they perhaps look like a Christian on Sunday, but in the rest of the week, they don't really know what it means to have Jesus as the Lord of their lives. So we thought we would give youth pastors especially a real solid tool with the Pledge album to challenge their kids to make Jesus king. Interesting. You used the word slogan, and uh, that really did enter our minds because it's so easy for someone to say, he died for me, I'll live for him. Yeah. And we wanted to make sure that uh, there was some meat on those words, some things that would, uh, when a person said it, they would really stick. I'm reminded of a story about a couple that got married. And when they got married, uh, the new husband looked at his wife and he said, he said, Honey, I really love you. And their first anniversary rolled around and, and she wanted to repeat the vows. And so she said, You know, Honey, I really love you. And he looked at her and he said, Well, that's, that's nice. <laughs> and second anniversary rolled around and, and she said, Honey, I, I really love you. And he said, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Getting into this now. That's right. And the, the fifth year, the same thing. And the tenth year, the same thing. And she was afraid to ask. And finally, she got up enough courage to ask him. She says, Wh why do, do I tell you that I love you all the time and, and you never tell me? And he said, well, 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 darling, I told you when we got married. What's changed? There's a lot of Christians that are like that with the pledge. The day that they that they meet Jesus for the first time and make Him Savior in their life. They make that pledge. And they never seem to renew it. And many of them fall away. It would be, it would be wonderful 
you know, if we could just say, Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sins, and all of a sudden we die and he zaps us into heaven. And really, that would be a lot easier. Uh, I spoke to a youth group the other night. I said, if Jesus were here and he asked you to give your life, how many of you would? Everybody in the audience raised their hand. Because in that one moment of time, we might could work up enough spirituality to say, yeah, Jesus, you died for me and I'll die for you. But Jesus asked us to do something that really is more difficult than that. He asked mm -hmm. us to live for him. And that is a very difficult thing to do. On a practical level, what does that mean? How do we really live every day for Christ? I think everyone faces choices every moment of their life. It could be about very small things. You know, am I going to cheat on this test? Am I going to speed down the interstate? Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, I'm guilty as the next guy on a lot of those counts. <laughs> uh, but but we, we live in a world of choices and we're bombarded uh, by a, a world that really doesn't know God. And, and on TV, you, you know, and on the radio, you hear some of the most ungodly statements and things. And you have a choice to make. Well, am I going to buy into this philosophy? Or am I going to do what Jesus asked of me to live a holy life for Him. And the pledge is something that we renew not just once in our life, but it's a daily commitment. And more than daily, it's hourly, and more than hourly, it's every moment. Yeah. And those things are practical. And it's hard. It's difficult. But we're going to get our reward, not only on this earth. I mean, I've, I've gotten a lot of my reward on this earth. I have a good life. But I know that I'm going to have an eternal reward as well.
That was The Pledge, our feature group from DeGarmon Key. You get the idea that these guys are serious about sharing the love with others? We're called to make that pledge that we're singing about. You know, most people today aren't ready to make a pledge or commitment to anyone, let alone God. In Romans in the Bible, chapter 13, verse 1 through 2, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is there's no power but of God, the powers that be ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. They shall resist, they that resist, shall receive damnation to themselves. The Word of God clearly tells us to make a pledge to Him, just like what DeGarmo and Key were singing about. How about you? Is your focus on you or on love to others and being subjected to the higher power of God? I'd like to invite you to keep an open heart today. You know, God is looking to make His way into, right into your heart today. It's a free gift and it's free to you. And if you want to know more about the love from above, I'd like to invite you to invite Him into your heart today and let Him just come in and work in you and change you and make you a, a special person. And I, then I'd like to invite you to write to me and tell me that you've made that decision, that you've made that commitment to the Lord. We want to hear from you. We love getting letters, and especially ones who, who, people, who people have made a commitment to Jesus Christ. Right, Victory Video, 6800 Hazel Court, Florence, Kentucky, 41042. That's Victory Videos, 6800 Hazel Court, Florence, Kentucky, 41042. Or give us a call at area code 606-371-9988. You know, we're here for you, and we love you. Thanks for being with us today. And as we close out today's program on Victor Videos, remember that Christ is coming back to this earth soon. Are you ready? Dave Dobbins saying, remember to love somebody today with the love of Jesus. Here's DeGarmo and Key, and hallelujah, Christ is coming. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Like a thief in the night, just like lightning in the sky When Jesus comes to take his church away yeah. Where the wave of his hand will be in the promised land And the people of the Lord will sing his praise Days are dark, hearts are cold, yet there's reason still to hope When we rest upon the promises He made From the clouds, from on high, He will part the eastern sky and move